Hi guys, in today's review we'll be looking at this all new tooled Backman locomotive and this will be one from the Big Four and this is the Great Western 94XX class. There is another version out there which is really old and that's the Lima one. This is the Backman one, like I said it was new tooled a few years ago and I got mine from the NRM or Locomotion Models for £120. The only catch with that was it's £7 shipping from wherever you are in the UK which is a little high. The product code for this you need is 35-025-NRM and I think this is era 3, I've got this correct and I think it is how it is now in the museum. So let's get into the review and see if it's any good shall we? So here goes. Starting off in the detail bag you get, you do get quite a lot of detail stuff. You get a looks like cab doors, rear steam heating through pipe, you also get rear buffer beam steam pipe as well. You also get screw and couplings, front steam heat pipes as well. You also get a vacuum pipe too. You also get a ATC box, a TPWS box as well if you want to fit them for era 9 stuff onwards and the ATC box is era 4. You also get some etched numbers for the cab side as well. You also get a manual too to tell you what to do with your locomotive, where your parts go and where to lubricate and how to fit the decoder if you're into that sort of stuff. This model is DC ready. As we move on now to the front of the locomotive or model. With this model you do get you get metal softly sprung buffers front and back and small tension lock NEM coupling already applied. You also get some iron to knock stuff off the tracks as well. You also get a hole for your chain links if you want to add them as well as some other detail parts that are in the detail bag. The buffer beam housing is in red. You can only see a few rivets around the edge. We also have a number of this locomotive as well with a shadow printing which number is 9400 and this is the one at the NRM and that is crisply applied as well. I think you get a vacuum pipe on the front or steam pipe on the front already applied. Moving on up we do get the three lamp irons. You also get a step at the front of the cement box door to help crew get inside. They have picked out the inches and the dart as well which looks to be separately applied, the dart does anyway. And we do get metal handrails on this. We also get a copper chimney as well. Not too sure if that's plastic or metal but it does look quite nice. As we move on to the side of the Locomotive now. These are some differences on either side of the locomotive. On the other side we have a, I think it's a metal reversing rod, which is great. That is around the other side, but around this side we do have a, I wouldn't say it's reverse rod, but there's a black rod going down from the tanks of the cab uh, down to the wheels. It could be something to do with the brakes, I guess. Uh, that is the only two differences I can see, and there's some other gold piping near the cab as well. Before we get on to what details this, this side has, this is delivery of it in its Great Western days. As you can tell we've got DWR, the initials of the Great Western on the tanks, which is crisply applied as a back front as well, back shadow. There's no rivets as far as I can see, and that goes to both sides of this model. The locomotive was designed by Hawksworth, and as you can see this is a 060 pannier tank. We do have shiny metal rods on this museum version. We also have shiny wheels as well. The axles themselves are covered up, I believe, in black. We also have some brake pads. We have some brake shoes as well. Sanding gear all down the bottom on both sides of this locomotive. Between the front wheel and the middle wheel, we do have some initials on that step, both sides. And I think it's Swindon, I think it's SWD or something like that, it's Swindon. We also have a metal handrail above the step as well. We also have a sanding box or a toolbox above the middle wheel as well. At the front of the locomotive, we do have two steps. We also have three or four lamp irons as well to put stuff on. They're on both sides of the model. We also have a fine handrail on this locomotive above the GW on both sides as well. Very fine, very delicate. As we move along to the cab, the cab area itself again is in the Great Western Green like the locomotive. We do have crisply printed numbers on both sides and again the number is 9400 and it is crisply applied. We also have a step as well. We also have two or three steps going up to the coal bunker with some handrails dotted around. At the top near the roof of um, the cab driving area we do have a red dot and I believe that is for the load or the gauge where it can go on the system of the Great Western. Everything on this model is crisply applied and very clean. 
Now, as we move on to the part everyone looks forward to in a steam locomotive review, and that being the cab detail. Backman have not laid down on this cab detail whatsoever. We do have a wood flooring effect going on in there as well. Most things in there are painted. I think there's water in the water gauge or fake water in the water gauges. I believe we have some dials on the gauges too. This locomotive does have a flickering or glow firebox, depending on what you run it on, which is a good touch. It's sort of growing on me, that system is. We also have glazing in the cab as well, front and back. Again, we do have them handrails for the crew to get in and out of the cab. Again, if you want to add the doors, they are in the detail pack. Like I said, the cab inside is highly detailed for a modern day locomotive. It's very impressive. As we move on to the back of the bunker now. On the back of the bunker, we do have a NEM small tension lock coupling already applied. We also have the sprung buffers again, which I believe are metal and in silver, this being a museum piece. Again, we have the number of the locomotive in the correct font, which is 9400. We also have a hole for the detail part. I think we have a vacuum pipe already applied, painted as well. I think there's a few lamp lines dotted around as we move up. Again, the buff beam and the housing is in red. There's quite a few steps on here. There's also some handles as well, some handrails dotted around. I think there's about four or five handrails. There's two on top of the side of the bunker. There's some running down the side as well. Again, we have four hooks just before the bunker curves, and that is for any fireman tools you want to add to it or buckets. We do also have some glazing in the windows, and we also have a grill effect going on. As we do an air review on top of this locomotive now, again, you can see the coal load. The coal load, again, I think is removable. There also is a half moon thing, which I think is for, is it the water or the brake handle inside the cab? That is there fitted. The roof itself has two small rain ducts either side running in a slightly straight line. We do have a vent on the roof. It doesn't open or move or anything like that. And the roof itself has no rivets and is in black. As we move along on the locomotive itself now, we do have a whistle, which I think is plastic. We also have a safety valve bonnet of the Great Western, again, in green. I don't know if that's correct or not. It looks a bit odd to me. We also have some marking where the linings should be and a few washout plugs as well. On the tanks themselves, we do have some fine detailed water filler caps. They don't move or anything, but they are there. We also have two domes and a stick. Not quite sure what they're for. I think you need to check the water, I've been told. We do have some moulded on in the four corners of the tanks. We have some holes or chains to put tarpaulins or something over it. They are there, they are finely detailed. As we move along to the chimney, the chimney itself, the top is metal by the looks of it. It's very shiny, very nice. There's a few handrails dotted around as well. And finally, I have to do an underneath look at the locomotive now. Looking at the locomotive, you can tell it has wiper pickups on all six wheels. We also have the brake rig in as well. I did try to get the base plate off, which takes four screws to come off. Removed, to show you inside, but mine doesn't seem to want to remove. But inside we do have, we do have bearings in there as well. We also have one of the wheels are driven, it's only one, which is a good touch. And when you take the base, base key plate away, the outside braking frames do come along with it. Like I said, it's only four screws and so do the copper pickups as well. Like I said, we do have Small NEM coupling to either side, and if you take them apart, there's two screws underneath to take off the body if you wanted to do that. And underneath the body, what is there, we do have a cordless motor, LEDs for the flickering firebox. And it also is where if you want to DCC fit it, I think it's an X18, I believe, if I got that correct. Again, it's very easy, very simple, but mine for some reason doesn't want to come apart whatsoever, so I do apologize. Like I said, this does have a cordless motor. Again, at the end, once you put it all back together, you do have the buffers as well. So next up will be the usual test I do, which is the point and second radius. Some of my backman stuff, even smaller like this, will not do second radius. So here goes, let's see if it's any good, shall we? Not bad, this is on DC, uh, ready, and it's, what, 15? It's 
It's pretty good, if I'm honest. So yeah, it managed that pretty well. The process I was really impressed with, the new way I do it now. It's fair on all the locomotives because they don't like the freeway Pico points for some reason. Second radius, again, it done it. I wasn't surprised, but back when I had a reputation with me of not doing second radius. So next up will be some slow speed and I'll wind it a train to pull. So here it goes, shall we? It managed that. That was, we're talking, about 20 originally, so it's a little fast, but it can do 10. And this is DCC ready as well. Pretty smooth as well. So yeah guys, that's the end of the running session and the review. Before I give my opinion, I'll tell you what it went with, which was basically the mixed freight, if I believe these are a freight locomotive. So we have a baggage car, a luggage car from Hattons and Hornby, and some random trucks, some only full stuff, and some milk tankers. And we also have a Dapol NRM, vent van as they've called it. And then we have two octorail toads, six wheel toads at the either end of the train. As for the locomotive itself, it did run a little fast on the running session. I think I had it at 25 for the whole session, just because one side of the board is slightly sloped and some trains do struggle. But failing that, it's a pretty nice run, a very smooth, very easy to handle on the controller. The slow test I did at the start, as you saw, it can do 10. I did manage to record it at 10, uh, but I lost the footage. So 15-ish it was. Still pretty good, and it's pretty smooth. Some might find it a little fast. I do highly recommend these. 
And now I see out with most models, but these are fantastic. They're quite cheap, especially at 120 pound for this day and age. Originally when they first came out, I think they were 110, even 100. But this being an NRM, it's the only one left available that I saw on the internet. Hopefully Backman might do another run of these, which would be great for other people who want them. Because I have seen a few people online saying they'd, li they'd like a model of this. And they're hard to find. I try to stay away from preserved locomotives, if I'm honest with you, but I really wanted one and this is the one I had. I do apologise about I couldn't get the base key plate off or the shell off. I don't know what happened. All the screws came out, but nothing was moving. I didn't really want to break the model. Personally, for me, I have no issues whatsoever. There's no faults with mine, unless you call, uh, cause the base key plate or the shell not to come off as the fault. But I might try another day to get it off. As you can see, it can pull quite a lot of stock. This, the train it pulled is basically half of my board, so it can pull quite a bit, if not more than my board can handle. Like I said, it ran pretty well. Cordless motors do the job, and if you do buy one of these, make sure your controller is compatible. I think it's a feedback controller or something like that. Some of the Hornby ones do make the motor make a weird noise. I have an issue with my 1P from Backman. It's just the way cordless motors are. So that's the only warning I will say about these. But for that, I highly recommend these for any one who collects preserved locomotives or a great Western fan. I believe these were on the Icky Incline as banker engines after the Big Bertha. I believe there is two of this class preserved, this being one at the NRM, and I believe one is down south, South Devon Railway, I think. I could be wrong, but I believe that's one there, and I think that's in the BR livery. But for me, I, I like these, they're good models. But no, they are a good model, I highly recommend them, no issues. A thumbs up for me, even the price is pretty keen as well. So guys, I will see you in the next video, so please take care and goodbye.